Hello, Concrete Mix Designers. Today, we're gonna finally get to work an ACI 211 Concrete Mix Design problem. This is gonna bring together so many things we've talked about in previous videos into one mix design example. This video today, we're gonna combine a number of topics from a lot of different previous videos into a single problem. We're gonna be bouncing around all over the place. We're gonna reference previous videos. I'm going to try to give you links in the notes to those videos. So if there's a specific question you have, you can go look it up and figure out the details. In this problem, the design strength is 4,500 PSI. That's a 28 day design strength. The contractor is going to request about a three inch slump. This is like for a pavement, for a slip form concrete pavement. The locally available aggregate is a three quarter inch nominal maximum size. The SSD rotted unit weight is 97 pounds per cubic foot. The specific gravity of the coarse aggregate is 2.65. The fine aggregate specific gravity is 2.63. And the fineness modulus of the sand is 2.6. We need all of these as inputs into our model. We also need to know about the exposure. This is going to be in a moderate freeze thaw environment. That means F2. Okay? F2. There's going to be no sulfate, no sulfate exposure, no corrosion concerns. It's, it's a pavement. And then we're going to use a 0 0.80 water adjustment factor. That's from experience. That's from a person knowing their materials and how they typically perform. And we're just going to tell you to use a 0 0.80. Now, you'd have to figure this number out for yourself. And the standard deviation from the compressive strength on the concrete mixture is 250 PSI. Now, one quick thing that we should review is how to use specific gravity. Specific gravity is the density of the material divided by the density of water. The density of water happens to be 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. This means if you have the mass and you want the volume, you would plug into this equation. The volume of the material is equal to the mass of the material divided by the specific gravity of that material times 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. But if you have the volume and you want the mass, then you do this. The mass of the material is equal to the volume of the material times the specific gravity times 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. We're going to be using that today. This is the worksheet, the ACI 211 mixture design worksheet that we're going to be using to work this problem. Now, over in this area, I'm going to write down calculations. And in this area, I'm going to write down specific parts that we need to work the problem. Then ultimately, we will calculate the mixed components down here and we'll be finished after that. In the givens, it was said that we had a three quarter inch nominal max size aggregate. It was also said that we needed a slump of three inches. Okay, that's the information we need at first to get the water demand. This is the basic water demand chart. I've talked about it in other videos. In this chart, you come in with the slump, three inches in this case, and you come across until you hit the aggregate size, three quarters of an inch. And then you go down, 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 and you read off the value. And in this case, we're going to have about 335 pounds per cubic foot. 335 pounds per cubic foot. Okay, now we're back to this chart. We get to write numbers in. It's going to be amazing. We're going to write 335 pounds here. That's what we got from chart number one. And then our water adjustment factor. It was 0 0.80. Now, this was a given, 
but this is based on experience. You're going to need to figure this out for your materials, and they're going to be different as your materials change. Watch a previous video to learn more. Okay, so based on those two things, based on my water demand and my water adjustment factor, I can calculate how much water I need. This is going to be calculation number one. I can take 335 pounds multiplied by 0 0.80, and that's going to give me 268 pounds of water. And that number is going to go right here, 268 pounds of water. And now I'm going to go ahead and calculate the volume. Okay, that's 268 pounds of water divided by 62.4 pounds per cubic foot in a specific gravity of 1. Specific gravity of 1, 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Once you do that, you get 4.29, 4.29. This is calculation number 1, and this is calculation number 2. All right, now we've got to figure out what water cement ratio we need. The first step is to think about what do we need for design. Well, the design strength was 4,500 PSI. All right. So now we have to calculate what our target strength needs to be. Our target strength is what we get from the standard deviation of our concrete mixture design. And in this case, there's two equations we need. The first one is target strength equals design strength plus 1.34 times the standard deviation. So the target strength equals 4,500 plus 1.34 times 250. And that's equal to 4835. 4835. There's another equation we need. Target strength equals 4500 plus 2.33 times, this would be S, which it happens to be 250 in this case, minus 500. Both of these are S. That's the standard deviation for that concrete mixture. At that, for those materials at that water to cement ratio. And this value is equal to 4583. 4583. Now this one's going to control the 4835. Now one other thing that we need to check is for durability. In durability, we know that we're only going to see freezing and thawing. So let's go look at those charts. These charts help us design our concrete mixture for the proper durability. In this case, we're in a moderate freeze-thaw exposure. Moderate freeze-thaw. That means we're in F1, okay? That means that we need a water spent ratio of 0.45 and a compressive strength at least of 4,500. And we'll use the air content table coming up. Now notice we did not need anything to do with sulfates. We did not do need anything for low permeability and we did not need anything for corrosion resistance. They weren't required for this structure so we don't have to think about them. In a sense, we have C0, we have P0, we have S0 for this structure. But we have F1. So let's move that information here. Our F prime C for durability is 4,500. And our water to cement ratio for durability was 
So this compressive strength doesn't control. Of all the three compressive strengths, this is the one that controls. So we need to use this one to help us pick out our water to cement ratio that we need. For that, we're going to need a three-point curve. Back to these tables and charts we started with. Three-point curves down here at the bottom. We found that our design strength was 4,000... 835, 4,835, which is about here. And the air content that we're going to need is about 5%. It's about somewhere in here. So if we go down... So for our given compressive strength and our estimated air content, we would pick out a water cement ratio of about 0.42, okay? This, this three-point curve was developed for a limited set of data. You're gonna have to figure this out for your materials. This curve will probably not apply to whatever materials you're using in your mixture design, but this is great for this example. Back to the mixture design worksheet. Now that we know our water cement ratio, 0.42, we can actually find our cement content, the amount of Portland cement we need inside of our mixture. This is gonna end up being calculation number three. We're gonna take our water content, 268. We're gonna divide it by the water to cement ratio, 0.42. And out of that, we're going to get 638 pounds of cement. 638. That goes right here. Now let's go ahead and calculate the volume. So now that we have the mass and we just need the volume, we're going to take 638. We're going to divide by the specific gravity of the cement, 3.15. And we're also going to multiply by 62.4 pounds per cubic foot. Multiply the denominator. Multiply the specific gravity by that. And that's going to give us 3.24 cubic feet. And that goes right here. 3.24 cubic feet. Now, we don't have any SCMs. If we did, we would actually not use all 638 pounds in this case. We would calculate how much binder we were supposed to use, and we would would multiply that total binder amount by the percentage of these SCMs being used inside the mixture, and we would reduce the binder by that. All right. The next step. So let's go back up to the top. Let's see what other information we need. The SSD unit weight of the coarse aggregate. Well, that was 97 pounds per cubic foot. Where'd that come from? That was a given. Okay. Let's keep working down the chart. Now we need our B over B naught. And to get that, we have to go to chart number three. To determine the B over B naught, we need this chart. We need to know the nominal maximum coarse aggregate size, which happens to be three quarters of an inch in our case. We also need to know the finest modulus. The finest modulus happens to be 2.6. So as we go up the chart, 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 and we hit the finest modulus. And then we come over, 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 over. We get a, a B over B naught value of about 0.64. About 0.64. We're closing in. The B over B naught value is 0.64. Based on that information, we can calculate how much coarse aggregate we need. This is going to be 27 total cubic feet 
That's what we're going to design for. This value is going to be down here. We're going to design for 27 cubic feet total. 27 multiplied by 0.64 multiplied by our 97 pounds per cubic yard. This is the B over B naught. This is the SSD rotted unit weight. And that value is equal to 1676. 1676. So now let's go ahead and find the volume. We take 1676 and we divide by 62.4 times 2.65. Why did we do that? Why did we use 2.65? Well, I forgot to write in. Civic gravity is 2.65 for the coarse aggregate and 2.63 for the fine aggregate. This was given. Great. So once you have that information, that you should get 10.14 cubic feet, 10.14 cubic feet. Now let's figure out how much air we need inside the mixture. Okay, our final chart. Are you ready? We need this one at the bottom. We have to remember that we're in moderate exposure class or exposure class F1. We have to remember that we have a three-quarter inch mo maximum non-laggard size. And we read across here and that we have 5% air that we're designing our concrete mixture for. Back to the worksheet. Whew. Man, I'm getting tired from flipping all of these pages. But we have figured out our air content. The air content happened to be 5%. That means that our volume of air inside of our mixture happens to be 5%. So let's go ahead and figure out what, what volume that contributes to the concrete. So this was calculation number six. Now calculation number seven. It's gonna tell us that if we take 27 cubic feet, and why are we using 27 cubic feet? Because that's how many cubic feet we're designing for. You design for a cubic yard when you do a concrete mixture. So that's 27 cubic feet. 27 cubic feet multiplied by 0.055% is going to give you 1.35 cubic feet of material. 1.35 cubic feet, and that's calculation number seven. Now, finally, we're down to our fine aggregate. And if you remember, the fine aggregate is determined by what's left. We basically force the answer at the bottom to be 27 cubic feet. Let me show you. This calculation, calculation number eight, we take 27 cubic feet, that's what we're designing for, then we're gonna subtract out the amount of water, 4.29. We're gonna subtract out the amount of Portland cement, 3.24. Then we're going to subtract out the air, 1.35. And then we're going to subtract out the volume of the coarse aggregate, 10.14. And all of that is going to give us the volume of sand, 7.98. 7.98. Okay, let's figure out how much weight that is. We do our good old specific gravity calculation. We take 7.98. This is the volume. We're doing it backwards now. We know the volume and we're trying to find the mass. 7.98 times the specific gravity, 2.63 times the unit weight of water, 62.4. And that gives us 1310. That number goes right here. 1310. Okay. Now, let's double check ourselves. 
Let's calculate our total volume. Now this should total 27 cubic feet, but it's always good to check and make sure we didn't make a mistake. We should take 4.29 plus 3.24. This is the water. This is the Portland cement or the binder. Then we're gonna add in the air. Then we're gonna add in the coarse aggregate. And then we're gonna add in the fine aggregate. And if you calculate all of that, you will get 27 cubic feet. 27 cubic feet. Nailed it. We better, or there's a big problem. Now let's figure out what the total weight is. This is a good thing. It's useful to just compare. It should be about 4,000 pounds, about two tons. So to do that, we're gonna add up all the weights. The weight of the water plus the weight of the Portland cement plus the weight of the coarse aggregate plus the weight of the fine aggregate. And if you add all of that up, you should get 3,892 pounds. 3,892 pounds. See? Pretty close to 4,000. That's what we thought. Let's do a few more calculations. Let's calculate the percentage of the paste volume that's not air. This is important. This is important for um, cost. This is important for sustainability, for durability, for shrinkage. This is just a good number that you should be thinking about and you should know. You should think in terms of what's my paste percentage of this concrete mixture. To do that, let's get calculation number 12. So we're going to take the amount of water, the volume of water, 4.9 plus the volume of the cement or the binder, 3.24. I'm going to divide that by 27 and multiply that by 100. And if I do that, I get about 28%. 4.29 plus 3.24 divided by 27 times 100 equals 28%. 28%, and that's calculation number 11. And now I'm going to do something called sack content. This is just another way people usually use to talk about concrete mixtures. It's pretty easy. You take the total amount of binder, 638, you divide it by 94 pounds per sack. This is the weight per sack of cement. And you get 6.8. 6.8 sacks. And again, this is kind of an old school reference, but it's still helpful to think in terms of concrete mixtures. Something like six and a half sack mix is a pretty rich mix, as in it's got quite a bit of cement in it. And it's pretty common for ACI 211 to produce mixtures that have quite a bit of binder in it, okay? or have paste contents that are a little bit higher than what you'd like them to be. This is the ACI 211 Mixture Designs example. If I made you dizzy from all the pages I looked at back and forth, it's because there's a lot of pieces to it. But there's a lot of videos I've made to try to help you with each piece. So please look at them if there's any part that you don't understand. Take care. Thanks.